Hello ladies and gentlemen, once again this is Jeremy Smith. Today we're going to be taking a look at Sony's new A7S. As you guys probably remember, we've actually looked at two variations of this camera already. We've already looked at the Sony A7 and the A7R. And in terms of menus and a lot of the main functionality, this camera is going to be the same. So I'm not going to go over all those little small details again. With the A7S, just like the a7r and a7 now this camera is kind of uh, specialized towards a particular task with the a7r the r stands for resolution and uh, that makes perfect sense with its 36 megapixel sensor uh, the a7 is kind of a nice happy medium it you know is a 24 has a 24 megapixel sensor and it's a nice balance between high so performance and resolution on this a7s though the s stands for sensitivity and so this camera is primarily designed to shoot in extremely low light conditions. Uh, its high ISO range <clears throat> is from 100 all the way up to 102,000, uh, excuse me, 200 to 102,000. And then it has an expanded range from 50 all the way up to 409,000. So we have some very, very impressive numbers being thrown around. Now, obviously, we're not going to take photographs at 409,000 ISO. You know, that's not something that, uh, that anyone would typically do. However, it is important to know that this camera does very, very well. Uh, if you take a look at the uh, sample photos in the description, you'll see that I, sh I shot a lot of photographs, you know, ranging in ISOs uh, from 6,400 to 12,800. I even took a few shots that were at 50,000 ISO. And uh, they were all shot in RAW and just converted to JPEG with no noise reduction. And this camera did surprisingly well. It holds on to a lot of detail. And um, yeah, basically Sony, they've, they've taken all of today's modern sensor technology and they've applied it to a lower resolution 12 megapixel sensor. And that results in lots and lots of, uh, of high ISO performance. The other thing that having the 12 megapixel sensor does for this camera is it allows it to be able to shoot 4K video uh, without having to do any fancy line skipping on the uh, on the sensor. So we're able to record that information using the entire the entire sensor, and it doesn't uh, it doesn't really uh, really have to do that additional processing, and we don't end up with artifacts and things like that as much. So it does very well there. This camera cannot shoot 4K video internally. However, if you attach an external recorder, uh, something like the Atomos Shogun, you can actually record 8-bit uh, video at 4K. And uh, you can do 24, 30 frames a second. I do have a 4K sample video that I, that I shot, and I'll post a, uh, post a little link to it. Uh, but I'm not going to include it in this video. And uh, I have some additional... Uh, 4K footage that I'll also be posting for you guys to take a look at. So, very, very impressive. Uh, I'm, I'm definitely not Philip Bloom, and I'm not going to pretend to be, uh, but but uh, I did shoot some 4K with this, and it is, it is very, very impressive. Um, although, it is time for a computer upgrade before I you know, can process even more 4K video. So, worked out very well on that. The other thing about this camera's video <clears throat> capability is the fact that it can also record in the XAVCS codec. And uh, instead of getting a 28 megabit per second file out of it, you'll actually get a 50 megabit per second file, so you can do a little bit higher, uh, higher bit rate. That particular codec was designed for 4K video, but since this camera can't process the 4K internally, um, they decided to uh, to still give us the XAVCS codec, but they're using it just as a as a higher bit rate for 1080p. And I will be posting some uh, XAVCS uh, video in this at the end of this review, so you guys can take a look at it. And then I'll, as I mentioned earlier, I'll probably post a separate video showing you even more 4K footage. So very very impressive there. Um, I did test this camera using a few different lenses. I tested it using the uh, primarily using the 70 to 200 f4 and the 24 to 70 f4, and I will be talking with you about that uh, about this lens a little bit later on. Uh, but for the time being, I'm going to show you guys the camera up close, and I'll kind of show you some of the uh, some of the unique features that I found very very helpful for for shooting video. Okay, so taking a look at the back of the camera here. 
I'm not going to go through all these settings uh, like I did before because we've kind of already done that in the A7R and A7 video. But I kind of want to show you some things that stand out in terms of video capabilities and kind of some things that are different. The first thing I noticed about this camera whenever I took it out of the box is that we have not one but two batteries included. And that is a good thing because trust me, you will need them. Uh, we're still we're still around 300 still photos or so. Uh, shooting video, I, I got about 30 or 45 minutes per battery. So, you know, it's nice to have two batteries included. Definitely go ahead and pick up a couple more, especially if you're going to do video. I do like that Sony also included a external plug-in charger for the battery too. So now we have the ability to charge over USB, but I like that they included that standalone charger too because the USB charging is it's not really ideal for a primary charging solution. It pretty much takes all night to charge the battery uh, over USB. Uh, it's nice to have the USB option as a secondary uh, charging option, but once again, you know, for more serious users, they're, they're really going to want their plug-in charger. So I'm glad that Sony included it here too. Taking a look at the uh, video options on this camera. We're in movie mode right now. Um, taking a look at that, of course, I mentioned the different file formats. We do have XABC on this particular camera. And if you notice there, when I go to that format, we have the ability to do up to 60 frames a second. And of course we've got 30 and 24 as well when we're shooting 120. All three of which are at 50 megabits per, per second there. And then if we drop down to 720p, we can actually do 120 frames a second. And unfortunately I haven't had an opportunity to test that yet, but uh, in a future update video, I may have to do that as well. All the video footage that I'll show you during this review was shot in XAVCS at uh, 24 uh, frames per second. I also like that this camera has something called dual recording. It's kind of kind of akin to shooting RAW plus JPEG in stills photography. Basically, whenever you record a video, <clears throat> it records two separate files. So you can record your XAVC file uh, or your AVCHD file, but in addition, the camera will also create an MP4. So that way, you have the ability to have your uh, higher bitrate file for editing and things like that, but you also have the MP4, so that way if you want to immediately do something with it, you have that option too, without having to actually do any editing. So, it works out very, very well to have the ability to, to do that. Let's see, what else here? Um, Sony's menu system, it's still... I don't know, it's not bad. It, it's still, I still bit, get a bit thrown off sometimes. It's it's kind of, uh, it's kind of like playing PlayStation 3. I, I don't know, it's, even though I've been using this camera for several uh, several weeks, it's I still find myself getting a bit, a bit confused at times. Um, I do like how this camera has a lot of customizable function buttons. We've got a C1, a C2, and C3 here. And that's something I found very, very useful. Uh, picture profiles here. <clears throat> this camera does have um, the ability to record video in an S-Log uh, format. Well, not format, but in an S-Log color space. So basically, it's kind of like using the uh, that new Nikon flat picture style that we talked about on the D810. Um, it records the maximum amount of detail in the shadows and in the highlights. And basically, it makes the video very, very friendly for color grading and uh, you can get your maximum detail and then you can do whatever you uh, you want to it and uh, in in your uh, color grading software once again guys I'm not Philip Bloom I'm not going to pretend to be but I have been uh, have been learning a little bit about Adobe speed grade and so once again in a future video we'll probably talk about about the S log gamma function uh, at some other at some other time so that's how that goes I did find that putting the camera on airplane mode actually increases the battery life, so you'll see that that's on right now. Um, yeah, basically the Wi-Fi function's nice, but whenever I wasn't using it, I did find it made a huge difference to have all that turned off um, as far as battery life and all that was concerned. So that did make a difference there. Let's see here, let's do this. When I was shooting with this camera, I was very impressed with the autofocus system. Um, although I found that manual uh, 
I found that uh, manual focusing under certain conditions worked out a little bit better. We do have focus peaking on this camera. Uh, there are zebras that you can use as well. And on this camera, I actually programmed the C3 button to be my audio levels. And that was very, very handy. Um, I recorded a, a, uh, a jazz performance, and that was very, very handy to be able to come in here and easily adjust my, my audio. I found the camera's built-in audio to be very good as well. I'll send you, I'll put a little link here to show you um, to show you some 4K video I shot. It's of a, of a motorcycle just uh, basically at night. I was wandering around looking for something that would look interesting in 4K. And I actually recorded that using the built-in sound on the camera. And I actually had the audio level set on auto and everything. And I was very impressed with how that recorded it. The Jazz Performance, I used a Rode VideoMic Pro and uh, obviously got better sound, but still the built-in audio is not bad at all. So I was very, very impressed with the camera. I also was very impressed with the high ISO capabilities. As I mentioned before, I do have some still photographs in the description to kind of show you that. Um, and right about here, I'll probably go ahead and insert a little, a little uh, video I did where I basically left the camera's f-stop and shutter speed the same and then I just basically started at base ISO and went to the max expanded ISO of 409,000 and you guys can see that this camera does really good you can see how I'm able to go in there and and you know turn turn darkness into daylight essentially so very very impressive one other thing that I thought was cool from a stills perspective is the fact that we have the ability to do an electronic first and second curtain so we can actually do completely silent shooting with this camera uh, let's see here I'll show you guys where that is really really cool feature once again I feel like I'm playing PlayStation 3 a little bit here but anyways uh, of course it is important to note as well that the ISO auto works very well in the video mode also Let's see here. It's really strange because a lot of things you think would be under the shooting menu, Sony actually likes to put under the setup menu. So it's <clears throat> it's a little bit a little bit different. Of course, there's a peaking I mentioned earlier. And see, there it is right there. <clears throat> Seems to me like this would be more logical under the shooting menu, but whatever. As you can see, we do have an electronic first curtain, but also if we go to silent shooting, I mean the camera, the camera can be set to take photographs completely silently. <clears throat> the only downside that I noticed to that is that um, sometimes you do get banding if you're shooting under like LED lights. Um, I'll stick a photo or two in here to kind of show you what I mean. I was shooting uh, shooting uh, this jazz performance and there, were, there was a lot of LED stage lighting and, and other things and I did get a lot of banding so <clears throat> definitely be careful of that if you're if you're using that function um, I also noticed it under fluorescent light some too but it is very very handy um, it's very handy for for taking photographs and being very inconspicuous um, especially if you're doing street photography which this camera is obviously very very good for with its amazing ISO range that's all the main things that I wanted to show you guys right now. If you have any questions or comments, write me write me in the uh, comment section below. And uh, if there's anything else you want to see about this camera, just write me write me about that too, and I will cover it in a future video. Uh, I'm going to leave you guys with a little bit of the uh, little bit of the in camera XAVC footage that I shot, and uh, I'll leave a description. In, or a link in the description rather for the 4k footage until next time this is jeremy smith signing off
We're on full autofocus now. <clears throat> I'm sure the audio sounds terrible, no doubt. The A7S is a little heavy for the selfie stick, especially with the 24 to 70 f4 mounted. But that doesn't that doesn't stop me. We're gonna just wander around a little bit, shooting 24p and XAVCS 50th of a second. F-stop is F4, and we're just uh, letting the ISO float around on auto.